Hello, networkers, and welcome back to another episode for Ask a Network Engineer. And in this off topic, I want to talk about Cisco's new program called Continuing Education. The best place to start when we talk about continuing education, what this actually means is how do we recertify our CCNA or CCMP or our CCIE? Well, we do that by taking another written test for any of those particular exams. I've been doing that for the past 15 years to maintain my CCIE. Well, Cisco, very recently, I think last year or two years ago, they started this program called Continuing Education as another method of how you can recertify your certification. So what is this Continuing Education? Well, they're basically classes, training classes. And you can go to Cisco Networkers and do some of the breakout sessions. You can go to on-site classes at particular training centers or there is online training. And again, this helps towards your recertification. And it is based on the number of credits for the certification that you're trying to recertify. So for example, so for me as a CCIE, it requires 100 credits. For a CCMP, there'll be 90. And for a CCNA, that will be 80 credits. On the Continuing Education website, you can browse classes or training that's available and to see how many credits you can receive for completing that class. So you can tell getting to like 100 credits, that can be a lot. But there's some considerations to keep in mind about this. So each class that is listed, it is not for free. You need to pay for these classes and to get the credits that you need in total. Plus, once you get your total credits, there is a $300 submission fee. So to recertify, is it better to pass the written exam or to do the continued education program? The best way to answer that is looking at the pros and cons of both methods. So for a written exam, for that particular approach, the pros for that is it is much cheaper compared to a continuing education program. So for a CCIE, I have to take a written exam that will cost about $400. And if I pass, I'm recertified until the next time I have to take it. Plus another pro is it is a familiar format. We know what to expect from it. We know how to prepare for a written exam. However, there are some cons to the written exam approach. And the main one is that these written exams are written so that you're forced to learn about concepts that you may not be using in the real world. I have had a lot of particular test questions over the years about ISIS. I don't work with ISIS. I never had to work with ISIS. I do OSPF or EIGRP, but I get constant questions on ISIS. And there's other similar topics as well. There's topics on there for MPLS. A lot of network engineers don't work with MPLS because that's more for a service provider environment. So you have to learn concepts, again, that you may not um, use at your job. Uh, furthermore, taking these tests for people who've been doing this for a long time is very mundane. It's just very tedious and it's like taking this test is not really proving my worth as a network engineer or as a CCIE network engineer and how that can be measured. Well, that's where continuing education comes in, where it is a better enhanced learning platform where network engineers get to learn about the latest technologies that are really important that they can use at their jobs or advancing in their jobs with something else. Now, the biggest con for the continuing education program is very obvious. It is the cost. It's gonna cost you a whole lot more. So on the low end, it's gonna cost you around $1,800. There's a couple of classes that are worth 50 credits. You take two of those, you got your 100 credits, but that's gonna cost you around 1,500, plus the $300 to submit your application to be recertified. And getting these credits, there's nothing trivial about it. You take the classes, once you're done, you get the credits. That's basically it. So it's gonna cost you more, but you're gaining more skills in the process. So it's kind of like, a dual edged sword. Like, yes, it's gonna cost you more, but you're gaining more skills as a network engineer. Okay, so here are my final points and kind of what I am going to do for my CCIE recertification coming up um, very, very soon. And I kind of start there. So a couple months ago, and every two years, I get the same email. 
So I get an email from Cisco that says, hey, it is time to recertify. It's going to expire January 24th, 2019. So you take a written exam, which is what I've done every two years, or do the continuing education program. So that sounded interesting. I never heard about that. So I read more about it and it was like, hmm, that is different and it is about time. But at the same time, I kind of took a step back and said, where is this coming from? Why wasn't this presented before? Why is it happening now? We can speculate all day long for what it could be. And very likely it's just another business revenue option that Cisco is introducing, right? Because again, these classes are not free. Um, they can be a little pricey depending on which ones you actually take. But in the flip side, you are gaining more skills you know, you know, in your toolkit as a network engineer, as a network developer, because there are some network programmability stuff on there too. But I was also thinking that maybe this continuing education program is happening because I think Cisco is starting to see the value of certifications dissipate. Certifications right now aren't as valuable as it used to be a long time ago, like in the 90s, in 1990. When I got my CCNA, I got my CCNA in 1990, 1998, I got my CCNP in 1999, and I got my CCIE in 2001. So they're kind of close together. But when I got my CCNA, right, I got it at Cisco. That was a big deal. It was like, you were CCNA? There were celebrations. I'm exaggerating on that, on that point. But it was a big deal for a little CCNA exam, you know? And, you know, the CCMP, yeah, that was kind of like some people recognized it, some people didn't. But the CCIE was something, it was the holy grail. Getting the CCIE was basically the finish line. You go across that finish line, your CCIE, your future is set. And I saw that. Opportunities came very quickly to me. You know, phone calls. I could interview and it says, oh, oh, I'm a CCIE. And there were more opportunities. So I did see the value of that. So again, why aren't certifications as valuable today as they used to be? And here's the blunt truth about it. Cisco knows this. They've been fighting this for years. Microsoft, Juniper, all of these companies have been fighting this for years. And in most cases, they kind of just given up. And this was actually a, one of the episodes that I did for Ask Network Engineer. We're talking about interviewing the right people. That I interviewed someone who was from MIT, but they didn't really know about access controllers the way that they should. And people said, well, yes, I know what's going on because it's a, it's a it's a growing trend. I'm paraphrasing, of course. And I saw, it was a couple of people that made that comment. So I read it and I said, yeah, I think it is official. I think it is about time for me to have that episode on this channel for Ask the Network Engineer. I'm almost at 100 episodes. And there, is, there has been one topic that I have been avoiding because I have extreme opinions about that okay more extreme than network monitoring systems because that's a rant um, somebody did a little hashtag I thought it was funny by the way that was actually very good this one is worse so I want to reserve that for that episode and that is with the certification test question dumps I'll leave it at that that is one big contributing factor for why the certifications aren't as valuable as they used to be. Because when I took my CCNA, my CCMP, and my CCIE, there were no exam question dumps out there. You had to do it the old school way. And that's why they were really respected back then. And I think Cisco is seeing that, and they're still doing it. And I'm thinking more because it's a business thing, right? They get, they get paid $400 for the test or at least the CCIE, that's very, very expensive than how much it used to be when I took it starting out. So the continuing education makes more sense for them to do that and to try to show value in the certification. So I think that's what they're doing and that makes sense. So the question is, what am I gonna be doing? 
So I am seriously looking to recertifying based on the continuing education program. I do think that is very, very interesting. These written exams are bogus, they're mundane, they do not assess true skill sets of seasoned network engineers, okay? There are a lot of CCIEs that have retired their CCIE number because they're like, why am I taking this $400 exam on spanning tree or ISIS? Never touched it. It's not my focus for my, for my business or for consulting work that they do, okay? The continuing education program, it does make sense. So I, there is a lot of particular classes in there that do look interesting that can advance me even further as a network engineer or as a network developer because I am looking in that direction because that is the future for, this, um, for the senior level network engineer people. So that is something that I am going to consider because again, I want to do that in the next couple of months because that would then push me to the path of becoming a 20 year CCIE and that's where I will officially retire my CCIE process, and that's it. But first things first, we certify. So that's basically, in a nutshell, the continuing education program. So I would recommend to check it out and see if that's a good fit for you for recertifying your CCNA, your CCMP, and your CCIE. And look forward to the episode on the Ask Network Engineer series where I talk about that particular topic of test test question dumps. And that is it. So thank you very much for watching this video. If this video will help you and you want to support the channel, you can do that on my Patreon page. And until next time, as always, keep networking.